It's about the kingdom. And when will you make time to share my gospel? Make time to point the lost to a brighter day in eternity. Oh, and this is not a game. And this is not a chance to see the spotlight. It's not about a church that seats a thousand or a choir that sings on the key. It's about the kingdom. And when will you make time to share my gospel? Make time to point the lost to a brighter day in eternity and make time for me. When will you make time for me? I don't think you know what love is. You have absolutely no idea what love is. Does your pastor believe everyone's a sinner? No. No? Yeah. Yeah, my pastor definitely did not love kids that he assaulted. Oh, your pastor assaulted children? Yeah, then he's a sinner himself. That's wicked. That's despicable. True Christians don't do that to children. Jesus said, if you cause harm to one of my little ones, it's better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and you be cast into the depths of the ocean. So what you think you guys are doing, that's not hurting the children? Absolutely not. We're telling people the truth. Do you, do you have any children? Do you have any children? I have a child. I, well, I tell my son, be afraid of touching a hot stove. Don't touch it. You should be afraid. It's going to burn you. It's going to hurt. If he doesn't believe me and touches it, he gets burned. Guess what? He's going to be afraid of going near a hot stove again. Is that fear bad for him? No, it's good for him because now he doesn't touch the hot stove and get burned. So fear is a good thing sometimes. Not always. There's people who misuse it just as jealousy. No, we're not misusing fear. We're not even causing fear at all. We're telling people who they should fear, and that's God. Jesus said, uh, fear not the man who can harm your body and do nothing to your soul. I'll tell you who to fear. Fear God who can destroy both your body and soul and send it to hell for eternity. Jesus said that to his disciples. So, I mean... Are we not hanging around those same people right now? There you go. Same thing. We're doing the same exact thing. We're hanging around a bunch of wicked sinners telling them the truth that God loves them, but if they don't repent of their sins, they'll go to hell. That's what the Bible says. It's true. And I'm sorry to hear your wicked pastor. I'm sorry to hear that wicked man did those horrible things to those children. And I'll tell you right now, if he doesn't repent of that, he's going to burn in hell for eternity. 
I don't want that for him, but if he doesn't repent of doing that, he's going to go there. There's not going to be any respecter of persons. Just because he says, I believe in Jesus, doesn't mean he gets to touch little children, okay? I'm just saying that. That makes me mad to hear that. That makes me, in, I, I have indignation towards that. That's not okay. So you're saying because someone has some challenges, they couldn't choose it. Are there challenges at this campus going to school, going to class? Did they choose to go to these classes? Did they choose the majors they chose? Are there challenges as a Christian? So I'm drop, I still chose it. What's that? Why would I not choose these three? Yeah, because you're perverted, man. I have no idea why. Could you choose to be gay? I could choose to be gay, yeah. Like anyone else could, too. Yeah, like I can choose anything else, any I sin. I like to see I've been a sexual pervert in the past. Not a homosexual, but a sexual pervert. And God saved me from that. Amen. And changed me and cleansed me. Me too. The same thing he can do for you. Me too. Don't run away from Jesus, man. He's the only one that can help you. He's the only one that can save you. No one can save you out of your lost cause. I'm a lost cause for Jesus. That's hey, you weren't born a homosexual or a transgender any more than a pedophile was born a pedophile. No one's born a liar, a thief, a drunkard, a fornicator, a sexually immoral person. You choose to be that way. And that's precisely why God will judge you for your choices. I sure do. Every day. Yep. You're a you know Every that? day I choose to be straight. That's right. It's actually very natural. Hey. God says so. That's the way God made you. I didn't make Adam and Eve. Adam and Steve made Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. We're not animals. I don't take my example of what is natural from an animal. I'm not an animal. I'm a human being made in God's image. No, it is not. I'm a human being made in God's image. I'm an animal. I don't look to the animal for a way I can live my life. A lion, for example, he comes to a fly and takes a gun to the Listen, man. I just want to let you know. I just want to let you know, man, that I love you. Hey. I love you. I want you to know that. I care about you. I do. I do. I care about you. Your soul is important. I mean that. I, I have some dear friends of mine that I've known for 20 years that are transgender. I can't imagine what you're going through. But I can tell you right now, Jesus can deliver you from anything. He can. He said, come unto me all who are weary, who are heavy laden. I will give you rest. You will find peace in me. He loves you, man. Go to Christ, okay? That was his help me. That's what God did. So you, you just, you just, I just don't like the order of God. That's the way God made things. I just told you the order of nature. 
You, re you receive it. You reject it. It is natural for me to be straight. I'm a human being. I'm a man. I'm a man who's a human being. I'm made in God's image. God made me a certain way. He made you a certain way. But you reject the image of God in you. You reject his word towards you. You'd rather be sexual perverts instead. You don't give an account for that. For your sexual perverts. So why is straightness natural for homosexuality? What is natural? What do you think natural means? No, I don't know. You tell me. He's it, natural means coming from God, what God made something as. And we're, we're not made as animals. Did he not make all the other animals? He did, but he didn't make them in his image. He made us in his image because he loves us personally. He personally chose to make us the way that he did. What about all the other planets that exist in the sky, you know? Okay, what about them? Why did he make those if we're the only thing that matters? Well, I don't understand. What, because he made them, that, that has some sort of aspect to us. That doesn't mean... We don't see... It. We have telescopes. We don't see life on Venus or Jupiter. We don't see life on Pluto or Saturn. Those are just the planets closest to us we don't even see life on. The, the Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God. I can't speak to you on the mind of God. I, his ways are above my ways. No, I'm speaking the words of God. Because, he, because he, he came and died on the cross and came into the world. Well, what year is it? After the death of who? Come on, man. Exactly, come on, man. No, I'm just giving you examples. You're asking me how I know. I mean, even if I, even if I didn't know the risen Christ, if I didn't know the Holy Ghost, there's still enough scientific evidence, historical science speaking, to know that Jesus was a real person who really was a Jew, who really was crucified on a Roman cross, who really did disappear and they did not find his body in the tomb three days later. All of those are historical facts. What about it? Well, the Bible says that every person has two lights, the light of creation, they know that something made them. They didn't come from nothing. You find a watch, you know somebody made it. You can see a building, you know but someone built it. Well, hold on, I'm answering your question, hold on. And the second light is the light of conscience. We all know right from wrong. The Bible says if you follow those two lights, you know there's a creator and you follow your conscience and you seek after him, he will reveal himself to you. That's what the Bible says. That's what I was just explaining to him. Huh? What about the people born before Christ who had never met any of the Jewish people? What about that? Well, there was Gentiles who were uh, grafted into the, uh, the root of Israel before Christ came. I mean, people in separate parts. Like I said, if they, they follow those two lights that God provided for them, the light of creation and the light of conscience, if they obey the, the light of conscience, they will find the light of creation, which is God, and he will reveal himself to them. He'll make himself known. I mean, do what? No, it's what they choose. It's what they do. They're choosing to do it. Perfect example. I tell a lie. Man, that felt wrong. I stopped telling lies. That's following the light of conscience. Okay, but so you don't need Christ specifically. Well, if you had never heard of Christ, say being born. Well, no, because if, if a person follows those lights, God's going to reveal himself to them through Christ. So, no, you still need Christ. Like I said, God will reveal himself to them. Before Christ, he revealed himself. Well, God revealed himself the same way throughout history. He just manifested as Christ in human history. But God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you think that all the other religions were on, some of the other religions at least were on the same the right track? Jesus said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So anybody before Jesus who wasn't looking forward to the coming and the hope of the glorious God and Savior Jesus, they, they didn't have the hope of the Messiah to come. They weren't of the Abrahamic faith. They weren't truly believers. They, but there were people who would have no idea of that. They'd been overseas. They didn't have the technology to travel over and learn about this other religion. Listen, man, you're, you're questioning God's ability to talk to people, man. He created the whole universe. Of course he's able to talk to people. Whether it be through a rock or a burning bush, he can speak to who, any person however he wants to, you know? I can't say every single aspect of every situation how God speaks to somebody. It's different for every person, you know? Do you think maybe that God is broader than your own personal understanding of the Bible? Absolutely, 100%. But what I do know is that, that the broadness of God is not in question here in the aspect of God's Word. God chose to reveal Himself through Jesus Christ, the disciples, and preserve His book, the Holy Bible, throughout history so that the people who wish to know Him can know Him. It's His love letter to humanity. He preserved it by choice. He has his hand on it throughout history. There's no other book that's been peer-reviewed more than the Holy Bible. It's the most peer-reviewed book in human history. I mean, literally. I know that she, she expressed that she believes in evolution because she said we're animals. Do you believe in evolution? You do? So uh, you, you believe that millions of years ago we evolved. So you believe what people wrote about what happened millions of years ago, but you don't believe about what people wrote 2,000 years ago. 
But there's also evidence for what happened 2,000 years ago. I think there's more evidence for what happened 2,000 years ago than what happened millions of years ago. I mean, there was actually people who witnessed what happened 2,000 years ago. Why would he allow, if, if this is the only way to get to God, then why would he allow other religions, why would he allow people to choose something else why would he even make that's a good question that's a good question the reason why god allows anything is because freedom of choice right it, because of love love has to require freedom of choice you can't force somebody to love you if you did it wouldn't be love like god forbid something wicked like this happened i'll use an extreme example let's say somebody went up to a woman and forced her at gunpoint in a car and went and did horrible things with her and made her do it right is that love on her part is it love on his part Okay, that's basically what God would be doing, spiritually speaking, if he forced us to obey him and believe in him. I mean, I'm not saying that he forces us to do it necessarily, but why is there a shadow of a doubt in the first place? Why not just make it obvious that he exists? Well, he did, by coming as Christ. It's not obvious. Well, it is obvious. People don't believe in it. There's entire countries of people that are 100% secular that don't buy it. So because they don't believe it, it's not obvious? Yeah. I mean... If I don't believe that if I don't believe that a tree has green leaves, does that make it I mean it's not I've obvious that green, green leaves in your entire no, life. No, 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 well, if I don't believe two plus two is four, does that still does that mean that two, it's not obvious two plus two is four? Just because people don't believe that's that's the argument from uh, that's the argument from authority. You can't just say because people there's a large majority that don't believe it that that doesn't mean it's not obvious. You can't, that's a fallacious I mean, argument. It is. I'm, I'm not saying it's not necessarily. I'm not saying that it isn't true, but it isn't obvious. It is obvious. It's very obvious. Why, why is it obvious? Okay. Well, where did the universe come from? I don't know. You don't know? I don't have answers. Do you know the universe is here, right? I know it's here because I experienced it. Something made it. Well, how did this? How did the university get here? What if it was just here? What you built it. How do you know that? Did you see them build it? God's word is true. There's pictures where. So you believe somebody made the building. Your belief would be true. Of course somebody made the building. And the same thing goes for the universe. How, if anything in the One second. If anything in the universe was made by anything else, that means the universe itself would have had to be made by the very nature. Otherwise it wouldn't be possible. You, well, random random decisions. Random decisions. What do you so it's okay. No, it's, it's all right. So just random things just happen. So if we're a product of random mutation and chance mutation, how can you trust any of your senses? How can you know what you see is, is true? How can you know what you hear is real? How can you know what you taste is real? There's no reason to even trust your senses. If you, you, don't, you don't see this, you know, the Bible the same way, how can you know it's real? Well, because I put it to the test. I can see, test, and demonstrate what the Bible says as true. How did you do that? Okay, well, I applied it to my life. I stopped sinning, started living holy, and God revealed himself to me, and now I have an intimate connection with the Spirit that is Jesus Christ. How did he reveal himself? Well, that's a whole testimony for another day, but I, I can, you can just take me on my word. He did a miracle in my life. There's a specific miracle at a specific time that I specifically asked him to do to reveal himself to me. And he doesn't always do that for everybody. He reveals himself in different ways to different people at different times. Like I said earlier, I can't tell you that the way he revealed himself to me, he's going to do for you. He might have a different plan in mind for your life. You know? Yeah, he does. Absolutely. Well, being gay is not part of God's plan. He didn't make people to do that. It's unnatural. Well, why do animals do it? How do you know it's unnatural? Because it says it in the, in the book. Well, do, do, can two gay people have a baby? No, don't say adoption. Can two gay people have a baby together? I mean, certain straight people. Is it is it natural to be able to have sex and not make a baby from There's it? There's plenty of people who can't. You believe in evolution. What's the purpose of sex? There's plenty of people born who are sterile. You're right. But but that's an exception. That doesn't apply to what we're talking about. Why is that an exception? That's an exception because what they do with their body isn't going to produce an offspring. But what is the purpose of sex? Hold on. What is the purpose of sex in the secular worldview? The purpose of sex. We're animals. What is the animal's purpose to have sex? To propagate it's, the species, right? The thing, it's hard to apply any purpose to anything. That's oh. sort of the secular view, so oh. if you take on that view, I don't know. So if there's no purpose to anything, what's the problem with us preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and telling people homosexuality is wrong? It's just hatred, that's why. Do you think that telling people that being gay is wrong is, is not okay? I think it's hatred, yeah. You think it's hatred? Well, what's wrong with hatred? What's, what's wrong with it? I mean, he said there's no purpose. Are you happy living like this? Tim? Absolutely. Why, Absolutely. Why because because people need to know the truth. The truth sets people free. It's about the truth. It's about the truth, yeah. It's about what is objectively true, not subjectively. Not our opinions, not our ideas. It's what what is actually true. 
Is it actually wrong to rape a little girl? Of course it is. No, I have a job. Well, I'd prefer not to say. I'd prefer not to say. It doesn't matter. It's insignificant. It's insignificant. Uh, yeah, I actually pay to do this. I pay to come out here and do this. I pay to do this, yeah. I pay my own personal money, time, effort, and energy towards doing this because I care about my neighbor. I love people. You know? No, I love gay people. I actually have a serious heart towards sexually immoral people. I, I mean that, too. I have two best friends I've known for 20 years who are transgender. I don't just cut them out of my life and stop talking to them. In fact, I might be the only person in their life who shines as the light of Christ in their life. Why would I cut myself out of their life and not be that light to shine for them? I care about people dearly. Well, that sounds hate. Now, see, now that's hateful. You now you want to talk about hate? How do I hate them? You think How do I hate them? Immoral in that oh, is it hateful to tell a pedophile don't have sex with with babies? I don't. Think is that is that hateful? Age is not the same as gender. How? You're right. Age is significantly less important than gender. You're completely right. A hundred percent. Pedophilia is not a sexuality. Yes, it is. It's a sexuality. They are attracted to, to children. That is a sexuality. So what is a sexuality then? It's whatever your gender preferences. No, no, no. Sexuality, not gender. What is sexuality? Whoever you're attracted to. But wait a minute. If I, but wait a minute. If I said that men are men and they can't be women, you would say gender and sex are separate. But now you want to say gender and sex are the same. Is, are they separate or are they the same? No, no, no. I asked you what sexuality is. You went straight to gender. What is sexuality? Whoever you're attracted to. Okay. And so pedophiles are attracted to children. That's a sexuality. That's not a gender. Though. Okay, That's you're you you do not see logic and reason right now. You're literally talking you yourself think in circles. Gender is the same as age. It's not. No, I don't. I never said they were. Well, well I, I asked I asked you what sexuality was and you went to gender. You don't okay? Know. Is age a gender? But but then I asked I, I said they're not the same. You agree with me and now I ask you what sexuality is. You said it's what people are attracted to. Then I say pedophilia is a sexuality and you say no, it's not. So, sexual pedophilia is a sexuality. See, the, the reason that you're, the reason why you're caught in this trap, right, is is not because I'm putting you there. It's because you know if you admit that pedophilia is a sexuality, it's not. Why is it not? It's what they're attracted to. No, it's what they're attracted to. Okay. Pedophiles are attracted to children. Which is an age. Okay. So. It has nothing to do with sexuality. It's a say yes it does because they're sexually attracted to them. That's what it is. No, that's what it is, okay? That's not what sexuality is. Yes it is. People think it is because it pushes your agenda. No, it doesn't push my agenda. It's true. See, your problem is if you admit that pedophilia is a sexuality, you would have to admit that pedophiles are born pedophiles because you probably believe gay people are born gay, don't you? Okay? And so pedophiles are born pedophiles. Yes it is. It's a sexuality. No, according to everything. That's the truth. Sexuality is what you are sexually attracted to. No, okay, who? So, uh, uh, pedophiles are pedophiles are sexually attracted to children. That's who they are attracted to. So you're straight, yeah? Yeah, I am. So you're attracted to little... I'm not attracted to anybody at this point right now. Nobody. No, I wouldn't. Why not? Of course not, because I'm not a pedophile. Okay. Because I choose not to be. There's people who choose to be. There's people who give themselves over to that wickedness and they choose to follow it. It's a choice. They're choosing it. They, they, one day they looked at a child sexually, it dis discovered they enjoyed it, and kept doing it. That's their choice. They're doing it by choice. They're not born that way. I don't believe people are born homosexual or rapists or murderers or liars. You're born an innocent baby. You grow up, you have experiences, and that kind of uh, causes you to lean towards certain directions. But that, that's just the truth. You're not born as some sexual deviant. You're not born attracted to women or men. You're born an innocent baby with no sexuality. You grow up and you develop your sexuality as you go, get older, as you go through puberty, as you have experiences that you discover you like certain things, you don't like other things. You know, that that's just, that's the truth. That's what we see in the world. I mean, it is a sexuality. It's what they're attracted to. That's not very loving. That's hateful. Amen. In eternity, all sinners will be cast into like a fire. No safe space there. <laughs>
Well, first, 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 you need to find the one that you want. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hemmed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. You gotta give up that homosexuality, man. It's gonna lead you to hell. It's not worth it. Know ye not? My brother preach. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. you look like you'd be able to help. I have, so I have a bunch of like music equipment in my car. So I have a big oh, ass like equipment. I was about to like I have a big ass like back. He helped me unload it. It's just too much for like. It's a bass stack, a pedal board, and um, a guitar. And then a second bass amp and a microphone. Fuck! I would have brought my bass if I'd known there were people here that knew how to play it. Thank you. I'd love to talk, sure. Okay. I, it's okay. I Do you want to keep wanna, the distance wanna, or? Yeah, I don't want to like get everyone involved. Or That's fine. Yeah, let's talk over here, man. Of course. What's your name? I'm, I'm David. David? Paul. Yeah. It's nice to meet you, David. Nice I'm Paul, yeah. yeah. How can I, I help you today? I'm a, I'm a Christian as well. I have, believe that there is judgment now. And, and Amen. Like, I, I believe in everything that you guys are saying. It's just that I don't know if I can get behind the way that I, I mean, like, I don't know if I can get behind the way that you guys are sharing the message. Of course. Like, so I Is it the presentation that yeah, has that you have the issue with? Yeah, the presentation. Okay. I just want to know, like, I'm not trying to attack anyone or anything like that. No, of course, of course. I'm going to share a scripture with you before I explain to you why we do this, if that's okay. So, Jesus says in 
uh, John chapter 7, verse 24. Judge not according to appearance, but yeah. judge righteous judgment. Yeah. Um, that being said, we can't approach people um, based on the way they appear or how it looks. Mm -hmm. We have to approach them based on their fruits. Yeah. Right? The truth about the Bible is that it says all of these things. Yeah. The Bible says don't go to hell, that Jesus died for you, to yeah. stop sinning, to believe the gospel, and to obey Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says that there's not going to be any sinners in heaven, only ex-sinners who repented of their sins. Yeah. The Bible does say that Jesus died for you and that you need to live for him. Yeah. The Bible does say that Jesus said, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Yeah. So if we had signs out here that said, uh, you know, things that were not biblical, yeah. I could understand feeling the way you feel. Yeah. Um, what, I, what I'll say is that God has led us out here to do this. Um, yeah. I'm a product of this ministry. Uh, I saw this type of preaching, this type of equipment, yeah. and I opened my Bible to try to disprove it. I, I was so appalled and offended because I was a professing Christian quote unquote, living in sin. I was smoking marijuana, having sex with my girlfriend at the time. I, I wasn't a Christian. Okay. I was false. Okay. I saw that and I opened my Bible to try to disprove it. Yeah. But when I opened my Bible, I was humble and I, I was seeking for truth. And I saw, lo and behold, it said all of that. Yeah. And so th that's what we're out here for. We're out here to reach people who are humble, who are willing to receive the gospel of, of God. Yeah. But that's the secondary reason. The first reason we're out here is to glorify God above all the wickedness in this world. Yeah. At a time where things are getting so dark, there's so many sins that are becoming abundantly okay in this culture, yeah. like murdering babies and, and just homosexuality and transgenderism. And, and pretty soon it's probably gonna go towards pedophilia. You know, just the way that this world is, our country specifically, it, judgment is coming. Yeah. And now more than ever is the time to stand up and hold these signs and shout off the rooftops of the highways and byways to tell people the truth. Because love can't remain silent in the midst of this darkness. It's just not possible. We truly love these people, you know? It might not seem like it, but we were, and I'm not saying you think we don't, but no, no, no. we really care about people out here. That's why we come out here. We, we want people to be born again and to know Jesus and to have that amazing feeling of being born again, yeah. receive the Holy Spirit, you know? I, I wouldn't imagine that you guys would come out here just because you hate them. And of course, like of you course. Wanna, you want to explain to them, hey, this is the right way. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we're out here. So, I mean, that's that's kind of where I'll start and just like say that though though on the outside it may appear harsh, we know that the truth hurts. Yeah. You know, the, the truth that, you know, the Bible says that correction is grievous. It's not enjoyable. To be corrected on something, it's grievous. You have to humble yourself and say, man, I really was wrong. Yeah. And if you don't humble yourself and you stay in that stubbornness and don't want to admit you were wrong, your life is going to get worse because of it. Yeah. We've seen that time and time again and I've seen it in my own life. Every time I uh, I'm above reproach where you know I don't receive rebukes like I just keep going down that wrong path that leads somewhere bad you know yeah, it to whether it be financially whether it be really? spiritually whether it be in marriage whether it be all these other things you know it leads to a bad place but the Bible says that you know uh, contentness uh, in the Lord is a good thing that if the Lord tells you you're wrong on something by using somebody else to tell you or it's brought to your attention that you're not doing something the Bible says to do or you're doing something the Bible says not to do, mm -hmm. with, if you have the Holy Spirit, you're going to immediately receive that. Yeah. You're going to be glad that you receive. You're going to be like, thank you, Lord, for correcting me. I don't want to be against your word, you know? Because God just wants those that he loves. Right? Exactly. He chastens those that he cares, that he loves. Re revelation. Amen. Yeah. And so, I mean, is, is that your biggest contention with what we're doing? Yeah. So, my... my my thing is that I've seen a lot more separation from it. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I don't know where to where to go from there. Like, it, it seems like it's causing a little bit more division than it is. Kind of well, you know, Jesus said, Think not that I've come to bring peace, yeah. but a sword of division. Yeah. To divide a father from his uh, son. A, a mother from her daughter, a, a stepmother from a stepdaughter, two against three in a household for me and three against two. Yeah. You know, uh, Jesus came to, to separate the wheat from the tear. He came to bring division. Yeah. So if you're if you're seeing division, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm not saying division can't be bad. Of course it can. But in this sense, in this context, I would say that division is a good thing. Yeah. You know, we're not dividing based on skin color or sexuality or any of that. We're dividing based on sin and saint. Yeah. Are you a saint or are you a sinner? That's where the division is, really. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I mean, we, we have to go by scripture. You know, we we have to we have to see what the Bible says about these things. You know, and and I truly do I truly do believe that division is a good thing when it comes to the Bible. I don't want 
to be in fellowship with someone who's willfully sinning. I don't want to. I don't want to be in fellowship with a person who's claiming Jesus but going home watching porn and masturbating or going home and, and cheating on their wife or, or going home and beating their kids. Like I don't, or going home and being addicted to drugs and stealing from people to pay for it. Like I don't want to be in fellowship with people who are telling lies, who are stealing, you know, who are doing these wicked things. I don't want to be friends with them. I don't want to be around them. I don't want to associate with them, you know, because th that's just the ungodly fruits of the world. You know, I want to be around people who I can trust, who I know are born again, who have the Holy Spirit, who are saved, who will open their doors to help me out, who will have my back when things get rough because they love Jesus first and then they love me second. That's who I want to fellowship with, who I want to be around, you know? And that's what the Bible says we're supposed to do. We're called to be separate from the world. We're called out of the world, you know? Alien, Yeah, peculiar. 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 So are you still walking in sin, do you mind me asking? You don't have to confess your sins to me. I'm not some Catholic priest. I'm just asking, is there something you struggle with, maybe? I mean, like, I do struggle with it. But, I mean, like, I, I feel like I, I walk in daily repentance. You know? Yeah. It's something that, well, like, I know that I'm fallible. I know that I, I know that I sin. I try not to. Um, it's just something that... When you say I don't, I don't, I don't know, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I condone living in sin. No. Of course, I'm not trying to say that at all. I'm trying to. God calls us to be perfect, right? Amen. Like Christ. Absolutely. That's exactly what I'm trying to build myself up to. So, so I'm just some advice, some edification here. It's just that I, I'm new to the whole. You can't try hard enough. There's no amount of trying that's going to work. Yeah. If you just keep trying, you're leaning on your own understanding. Yeah. It's not going to work. You have to die. You have to start dying. You have to die to yourself and say, Lord. I can't do this on my own. Yeah. I can't. I need your grace. You know, I need your grace to overcome this sin. Yeah. Because the more you try, the harder it will get. And that, that Paul described that. He said it's like people who are striving to obey the, the law of Moses. If you break one, you break them all. Yeah. It's not possible for you to walk holy for God on your own. It's not going to happen. Yeah. You have to come to the death of yourself. You have to do like Paul did at the end of Romans 7. Oh, wretched man that I am, who would deliver me from this body of death? Yeah. And put on the new man through Christ Jesus and and hold every thought captive to Christ, right? I don't sin anymore. I'm not a sinner. I used to be a sinner. I used to be wicked. I was deprived. I was horrible. But God saved me from those things. I'm not saying I can't sin. I'm, I'm saying I willingly take the way out that God provides me every time because he is faithful yeah, and he, he will is. provide you a way out of every sin. Yeah, he provides that scapegoat. So when you say daily repentance, I just want to give you a bit more edification here. Do you know what the word repentance means? Yeah, uh, turning away from it. Yeah. Do you know the, the Greek word is metanoia? It means the yeah. changing of your mind. So, I, I tell lies, I repent, I change my mind. I, I don't want to lie anymore. Yeah. I stop lying and I walk in the truth through the grace that Jesus gives me, yeah. right? Now, if I keep trying to not tell lies on my own, I'm going to tell a lie again. But if I, if I hold every thought captive to Christ, yeah. he's going to tell me before I open my mouth and even speak, don't, don't do it, don't do it. And if I obey that, right, yeah. through the grace of God, then I won't tell that lie. The Bible says, if, it's conditioned, if you walk in the Spirit, you will, there's the, there's the promise, yeah. you will cease to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Yeah. Now, the Bible says that the love of God is enmity with the love of the world. The love of this world or the things of this world is an enemy of God. And, yeah. and it's not the love of God. It doesn't come from God. The love of the world is the lusts of the eyes, yeah. the lusts of the flesh, and the pride of life. Right? Yeah. Those things do not come from God. They're not of God. They're against God. Yeah. So, if we're walking in those things and we repent and we get the Holy Spirit and the grace of God that teaches us to deny ungodliness, worldly lusts, to live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present day and age, right? Mm -hmm. If we get that grace, we will stop doing those things. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. So if there is some sin that you're still struggling with, now I, I can't tell you if you're born again or not. I, it seems to me, it appears to me that you're, you're very genuine in your faith. Um, if you're struggling with some sin, like, uh, you said that you're daily repenting. Are you struggling with the same sin, or is it a different sin every day? It's, uh, is this something that you just keep going back to and you can't, like, figure out why you can't stop doing it? Well, like, it's uh, something that's not something that I keep on going back to every day, but it's something, it's like an intrusive thought. Okay. Well, intrusive thoughts aren't necessarily sinful. They're temptations, right? Uh, I didn't... The Bible does say a foolish thought is sin, but that's talking about like if I look at a woman and I lust after her. That's a foolish thought. 
That's yeah. t- that's not temptation. That's actual sin at that point. But if I look at a woman and I get tempted to lust after her, Damn. but I hold it, I rebuke it, hold it captive to Christ, and immediately say no, and and don't do that. I don't have to repent for that. Yeah. I didn't do anything wrong. I did what God told me to do. I immediately squ- uh, crucified the flesh, put the thought to Christ crucified and gave it to Jesus and didn't fall into that temptation of lust. In fact, you should actually praise God. For that. Exactly. Praise God. The Bible says, blessed is a man who endures the fiery trial, yeah. who endures it, who goes through it and comes out the other side. Yeah. yeah. So don't be fooled into thinking if you look at a woman, you know, and you get tempted to lust after her that you just sin. Yeah. Right. That's not what sin is. Sin is lusting after her. It's actually doing it. Right. Um, the action. Yeah, the Bible says that if you do anything outside of faith, that it's sin. The Bible says in James 2 that he who knows to do right and does not do it, to him it is sin. Yeah. You know? So if I know, when I look at that woman, to hold that thought captive, but I don't do it, I need, I've even had times, I'll, I'll get personal with you, I've had times in the past, after coming to Christ, being born again, walking holy for God, where I looked at a woman who was immodestly dressed, and I didn't immediately hold that thought to Christ. I didn't lust after her in the moment, yeah. but I didn't immediately crucify that thought and hold it, I just threw it to the side and kept going. And later on, I fell into sin because of it, right? And I've come to learn now that I have to deal with it immediately in the moment. I have to immediately crucify it, kill it, throw it on the cross, and the let it die. It a it's a, a seed that's planted that starts to grow. Exactly. That's a good point, like a weed, right? Like, you don't even have to water it. It'll steal nutrition from other plants, you know? And and it, it's a, that's an intrusive thought. Yeah. Now, um, knowing that, I hope going into the future, knowing that, that you'll have a bit of you'll have a bit of um, a bit of victory now because the Bible says Jesus gives us victory over sin. You know, we're we're delivered from our sin. Christ doesn't leave us in in the sin, right? Just like a fireman. What kind of fireman do you know of that's going to leave a person in fire, right? That would be a, a very bad fireman. You know what I mean? Like they're going to bust the door down, and if you fight them, yeah, and if you fight them and they they can't get you out, they'll knock you out and drag you out of the house. There's cases where firemen literally have to knock somebody out to save their life. Yeah. Like it's violent. Like literally strike them over the head and drag them out of the house. Yeah. Later on, the people are thankful. They're thankful. They didn't know their house was on fire. They just woke up out of their sleep. They were fighting back. They didn't know what was happening. Yeah. The firemen saved their life by bonking them over the head and dragging them out. Yeah. You know? And that's that's kind of what God does with us. He chast he chast- chastises us, bonks us over the head, spiritually so to say and takes away the things that we put in our life as idols to him. If we're idolizing cars, he might make your car break down and you don't got the money to fix it. You know, if you idolize like, you know, um, instruments, you know, he might make your guitar strings break and you don't, there's no way to get some strings that day. And you gotta just give it to God and be like, man, God, I can't believe I let that become an idol. You, you, you know, you idolize video games, boom, next thing you know, the power goes out for 18 hours. What do you do now? You know, like, he'll- God's trying to get my attention. Yeah, he's chasing after you, you know, and we, we have to, it's almost like this, like, I trust in God's ability to speak to me more than my ability to hear him talk. Mm. I do. I really do. And, you know, there's a story I heard my pastor say to someone else one time. Um, there's a guy who worked in a jewelry store, and he was refining silver in a fire. His job was to purify metal and burn all the metals away and purify the silver and pull out pure silver from this burning blue hot fire. Yeah. And um, he had an apprentice one day. The apprentice asked him, how do you know when to pull the silver out of the fire? If you hold it in there too long, just a moment too long, it melts the silver too and destroys it. So it becomes useless. You have to know exactly when to pull it out. How do you know when to do that? The apprentice uh, asked that to the, the, the worker and the worker said, well, that's the easiest part. I, when I see my reflection in it. Yeah. And God is the same way. He holds us in that fire and, and burns all those impurities away. And when he starts to see his reflection in us, we start walking as he walked. He gives us blessings and pulls us out of that fire. Yeah. That's what that's what the, you know God does to his his people. He loves us. He's just waiting to give us blessings. But this isn't some prosperity gospel. He's gonna give you a big house and a and a pretty wife and a nice car. Like it's not like that. It's what it, he's gonna give you what you need. He's gonna give you clothing that's sufficient. He's gonna give you transportation that's sufficient. He's gonna give you food. Matthew 5, if he dresses the lilies of the valley. Oh, well, that's actually Matthew 6, but you're right. We were actually in that uh, on, in church last weekend. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, he cares. He, does he not care for you more than the birds or the, uh, the flowers? Yeah. And he gives them a raiment. He gives the birds food. You don't see them flying around starving, uh, begging with signs and going to the grocery store. Yeah. You know, like. You, he gives them food daily bread. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, he gives them their food. Why, what, what would he not more do for his own children made in his image? Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Can I give you a, a gospel scripture here? Yeah, yeah. This is for Christians. It's called the God Fruit Track. It doesn't got no donation page or nothing on there. It's just Bible scripture to put yourself to the test to see if you're truly walking as God wants you to walk. Right? Yeah. What was your name again? I'm David. David. 
I'm going to keep you in my prayers. Yeah, thank you for taking the time to... Of course, man. That's why we're out here. I just really wanted to see what you guys were about, because there's a lot of people that are preaching, you know, condemnation, but they don't preach the The love. Yeah. Man, they, they leave. You gotta preach the full counsel. Yeah, the full counsel. The love and the, the Bible. The Bible says, um, um, what, what is it? Uh, the con, the, the, the goodness and the severity of God. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, I had a, a Bible slip moment. Uh, we're, we're called to, to, um, notice both the severity and the goodness of God. You yeah. know, like it, the goodness unto those who, uh, through patience and continuing in the faith, you know, uh, seek after, uh, holiness and, purity yeah. the, that's the goodness that god gives them but then the the severity that falls under those who fell and did not stand in the righteousness of god but continued in their sin yeah god is 100 percent just but he's also 100 love amen yeah well i wouldn't say he's 100 percent love i would say that god is love that yeah. anything that's love or loving comes from god yeah yeah that's that's what i meant that's yeah no amen yeah i wouldn't say because if you say he's 100 percent love that's that can be saying that he doesn't have any hate yeah yeah but god does hate yeah he hates the hands that shed innocent blood there's seven things that God hates, and six of them are, are an abomination, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Amen. You know, and it's just like we just have to we have to make sure we're walking circumspectly in our faith. You know, may, may it never be said that I'm, I'm a hypocrite in my faith. You know, if I go back to my sin, I, I'm not. God's not going to respect me more than anyone else and just give me a pass. If I go back to my sin and die, I'm going to hell. There's no this eternal security is just not true. It's not true. You can't. Just believe I'm a born again Christian, but then I go molest children and I go to heaven. It doesn't work that way. You know, you can't continue telling lies and willfully sinning and having sex outside of marriage and, and doing these things that you've been delivered from. Because if you do, you're building back again the things which you destroyed. Yeah. Galatians 2.17, for if we seeking to be justified in Christ, ourselves are found to be sinners. What then? Is therefore Christ a minister of sin? God forbid. Yeah. You know, we're, we're called to not walk in sin anymore. Yeah. So I'm going to just keep you in my prayers, David. It was good talking to you. you got any more questions for me, man? Uh, no, man. Thank you. God bless you, David. Yeah, God bless you, too. Amen. Praise God. That's how I'm going to love you. Regardless of what color. Whatever. Whatever. Is that person? No, male and female. Transgenders, love Transgenders hate themselves. Right? Because, because God created them to be a male. And so they want to be all oh, listen. I haven't had anyone ever a woman, and they want to be a man. I've never had someone sexually molested. You're not happy with the way you were created, so you want to cut off body parts. Then you want to groom children to believe the same. Oh, it was great. Oh, dude, his name was David. He was he was really. He was really humble, man. I think he, I, I genuinely think that he has the Holy Spirit. He's deceived. Yeah, well, he wasn't that deceived, though. I mean, he was agreeing. He was just struggling with the thought that it's possible to walk without sinning. And I walked him through some scriptures, and, you know, he, uh, I mean, he was very humble. That was very, that was, a, I, actually, I think that the Lord led me out here today just to talk to him. I do. That was, that was a real blessing to talk to him, man. He, his name was David, so keep him in your prayers, man. He, he for sure was a blessing to talk to, man. I, he, he, his biggest contention was the signs and stuff, you know? And before I even started explaining to him why we do that, I walked him, I brought him to John 7, 24 and showed him, you know, not to judge according to appearance. So though it may appear like it's not Christian-like, you have to dig deeper and see, well, is that all scripture? Is that all in the Bible? Is that all what God's word says? And if it is, then you have to judge righteously and say, well, then it's, it's the right thing to do to have those on there, you know? And he, he actually agreed. So, you know, I think he really just wanted a clarification as to why we were doing it the way we were doing it, really, you know? So, praise God for that. Did you have any good conversations? So, there, I mean, I, I have some conversation, nothing really too notable. Yeah. So, like, the, the, the high point, Even when it comes for, to, uh, not that I was free will choice. not the Lord, I happy here. For this reason, because it was good that because all the brothers were in the game, in the world that they're about to blast us out. So I was the only person that was kind of free standing around. So basically, um, Adam was like, I go tell the officers about that. So they're about to blast us out. That's like, that's and so that, and they told him not to. Yeah, praise God. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to like. No, no, Amen. Praise yeah, God. Yeah. Gospel, Adam, well, I was wondering why they stopped immediately after starting. It's not the same as. They don't look too happy now. They brought all that out there for nothing. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would, I would be. I mean, that's, that's what this Lord's humbling. I kind of want to go let them know, you know, all that labor was for nothing, and that's what you're doing in your sin right now. You're laboring for nothing. You're just to get shed a little. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, bro. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Hey, y'all notice y'all did all that laboring for nothing, right? 
That's the same as when you walk in the world and sin. You labor for nothing. Just figured I'd let y'all know. You know, one day, I mean, you were, you just hurt me, so. God bless. All that laboring for nothing, man. That's what they're doing right now, laboring for nothing. Same situation. God's going to come like the police one day and shut them down. So speak for yourself, sir. We have a job. Thank you. Go do it then. Do you have a job? I bet you don't have a job, do you? Hmm. Hypocrite. It's hypocrisy. We don't go to every single gay event, accuser, and we don't make money. Thank you. We pay money to do it. He's lying about it. Thank you. We're not spreading lies. Prove it. Turn your side around real quick. Turn your side around. Prove it. Turn your side around. Turn your side around. Turn your side around. Turn your side around. I got you. I have to have Muslims and racists on the same fucking side. Make it make fucking sense. Muslims and racists on the same fucking side. What's wrong with that? You're Christophobic. You Christophobe. you're talking about right now. They're completely ignorant to what you're speaking on. That's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing. None of you are oppressed out here. None of you. No, you're not. Or to take up the sword and kill anybody. Or to be racist. Jesus never told anybody to do that. In fact, Jesus said you shall know them by their fruit. So if somebody shut the hell up. I'm talking history here. Great history out here. Sad history, obviously. And you can't discern between truth and lies. So just because somebody says they're a Christian and goes and does things that are evil doesn't mean they're really a Christian. Ma'am, you thought that it was racist to tell Muslims that they go to hell. You have no idea what you're talking about. You're completely ignorant. 
Let go, bro. Where's God? I uh, I talked to a guy named David earlier. Yeah, he he was. I think he I think he had the Holy Spirit, man. He he didn't like the signs and was kind of questioning about it. But I brought him through Scripture and, and just just showing him that you know like you have to judge based on the fruits. Like what, what is this sign saying what the Bible says? And he actually humbled himself. Was like, man, I never thought of it that way. You know, he, he had, I guess he was struggling with some sort of habitual sin, but I just gave him some edification and let him know that, you know, you're trying, he kept saying, oh, I keep trying not to, I'm like, you gotta stop trying and die. You, you can't do it on your own. The Bible specifically says, you know, you cannot do it on your own. You gotta go to Christ, man. It's real edifying. I think the Lord led me out here just to talk to him today. Yeah, praise God. You have your own definition of what love is. Oh, uh, just, just to bring you up to up to date with this conversation, this girl thinks it's racist to, t to tell Muslims that they're wrong. It, I know, but that's what she thought, and that's why she was mad at him for having Muslims and racists right there. She's saying he's a hypocrite. Like, are you kidding me? Sir, you're very hateful. Yes, I am brainwashed. I'd rather be brainwashed than brain dirty. Hey, Amen. Woo! Oh my God, I know this is for a little example. The definition of insanity, right? Oh, yes, I'm so insane, but you want to... So why do you keep sinning over and over? You keep sinning over and over. Sin isn't real according to the sinner. Yes, the sinner would say that. I want to keep doing what I want and never suffer the consequences for it. A sinner would like that. But that's not the truth. God is going to judge you when you die and stand before you. No. And we're trying to show you how to get out of that judgment in Christ. Nothing you're suffering is all oh, your own death. You're not suffering in hell. You have no Nothing idea of salvation. Nothing God is talking to you. You, you cannot refer to anything for the now. The only thing you want is to give a You. I don't want you to go to my church. No. I'm not going to lie to you. That's your choice. That's your choice. That's kind of funny. You gotta stand before God and give an account for your choice. Richard's a scammer. Okay, that's your opinion. Oh, oh no, no. Well, okay, well, then you're both confusing us. Wait, are you trying to make him submit to your opinion on what you just said? Yeah. Sounds like you're trying to make him submit. Yeah. So you're a hypocrite. You're a false You want us to submit, but you accuse us of wanting you to submit. Are you kidding me? No. Come on, man. He's attacking his logic. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm only I'm only 26, 27. How can I have 2,000 years of anything? My man, I just explained to you. Not everybody that calls himself a Christian in history is a real Christian. Only Christians are those that obey Jesus you and what he says to do. So by you saying that Christians had pogroms and they were slave masters and they were killing Jews and Muslims, it's irrelevant to the truth. Those people are not true Christians. They were not following Jesus. They were not following Jesus. You'll see how loving this sign was when you die and stand before God. Now you need to put that Nintendo Switch down and switch over to Jesus is what you need to do. Seriously. You got so much hatred for no reason. No reason at all, man. Come on. Oh. Whoa. You know what Jesus said? If they hated you, you just know they hated me first. So you confess it. You heard that? Christians should be stomped down. Man. So you're, you're, you're just agreeing with the Bible. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Very loving. Good job. Good job. You just proved the Bible true. What Jesus said. But you know what? God was wrong to flood the earth. You don't know. Who are you to stand against God? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, little man. God. You think he's going to care what you think? 
You know what? My God has so much love that in the midst of you blaspheming against his Holy Spirit, right, and doing a go in his word, he still loves you. Even in the midst of you on your way to hell, he still loves you. Okay? I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. You are created in the image of God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, and God loves you. No, I'm telling you the truth, man. I don't want you to submit to me. I want you to submit to God. It's not about my opinion. I didn't tell you to come to my church. Sure. So y'all are making arguments that are mainly based on like simply Christian views and values, right? The Bible. Yeah, God's word. Could you back up these arguments in a more encompassing idea in something that like everyone could realistically agree on, you know? Um, not everybody is going to agree on everything. That's just never going to happen. That's just an unrealistic expectation. I'm not sure if bias is the right word, but not from a simply Christian perspective, but from a human perspective. No. No, we can't. Yeah, amen. We start with the Word of God. That's where everything begins. The Word of God. When y'all are saying, you know, everyone who's on those sides is going to help, right? If they don't repent, yes. They have to actually repent. So everyone, according to your logic, everyone is going to help unless they repent. Yes. That's, well, that's God's logic. Okay, so that's God's logic. And how do people know that that is God's logic? We have his word. I'm actually trying to walk through. Well, we have his word. We have God's word. He, he... Okay, did you write that down or did someone write down what they heard? Okay, before I answer that, can I ask you a question? Sure. Okay. Do you, you go to this college, right? Yes. And do you believe things that people wrote down in books that you study? Sometimes, yes. Okay, so for the same purpose, we believe that God had specific people at specific times that he filled with his Holy Spirit to write down certain things at certain times. God preserved his word so that we would know him, so that we can seek after him, so that we can find him, so that when we knock, the door will be open. That's what God did with his word. He preserved it. Did you know the Bible is the most peer-reviewed book in human history? Yes. There's never been a book peer-reviewed more than the Bible. Yeah, because it's been around so long and people have read it so often. There are billions of people who read it. People have put it to the test in their life over and over. It's seeable, testable, and demonstrable. Well, testable. So you believe your rabbi. You know? How is Eh, what does that mean? It means that how is it truly testable until one is actually dead, in which case they cannot come back and say... Well, there's things in the Bible you could test right now and find out that they're true. If you don't have sex outside of marriage, you won't get pregnant. If you don't have sex outside of marriage, you won't get an STD. That's testable and demonstrable. No, but that's testable and demonstrable, is it not? But here's the thing. These ideas that you were saying are testable are not truly testable now in the moment. I just gave you an example of one. I just gave you an example of one. If you practice abstinence, you won't deal with the consequences of immorality with sex. Okay. That's a testable and demonstrable thing from the Bible. That is one specific value. I can give you many more. I can give you many more. Can you please tell me how... The question is, would you believe them? That's the real question. Would you, if I gave you these examples, are you just going to argue each one of them? Or are you going to humble yourself and admit when you're wrong and see that the example I gave you is true? Okay, here's the thing about arguing with them. Okay? It's not that I'm trying to say that you're definitely wrong no matter what you say. I am trying to shine light on some cracks in your argument that you might not see because you're kind of blinded by it. And what cracks are you speaking of? Well, that's why I'm asking you these questions. So you don't know the cracks. You're, seek you're seeking after cracks that you don't even know that they're there or not. Well, no one can see them unless they actually adjust their eyes and try to look for these faults. And that's why I said the Bible is the most peer-reviewed book in history because people have been searching for those and they can't find them. They're not there. There's no cracks in the Word of God, my friend. None. In fact, if there were cracks in the Word of God, God wouldn't be God because He promised to preserve His Word for His people. Well, you, the way you're arguing is sort of the red herring fallacy. How's that? 
So you're essentially basing it on your already standing beliefs. And okay. so you're defending your beliefs. Are you saying I'm closed-minded? I'm starting from... No, this is like a circular argument. You're defending your beliefs with your beliefs. Of course. And so why would you not be able to defend your beliefs from outside of... Because if I had to go outside of God's word to prove God or, his, or the belief in God, then God wouldn't be God. It would be what I went to outside of God's word that would be God. If God is who he claims to be, it has to be circular reasoning because God justifies himself. But circular reasoning. Do you understand what I just said? If I leave God's word, well, here's the problem. If I leave God's word to justify God's word, it doesn't. It's not God's word anymore. Now, whatever I went to becomes the justification. God's word has to justify itself. Otherwise, it's not God's word. Well, and when you step outside of that and are able to point at it from other perspectives and other directions, you're able to further prove it. But if you just point at it, well, I gave you examples. I showed you examples. Sure, but you're going in circles, man. You're go I'm sorry. You got. You got to get. You're the one who's got to step in circles, which is what I'm saying. Is that your your logic is based on itself. When if you support it with other things as well, that's adding additional support to your house. Well, I did. Well, you're basing it off of its own. You know. Well, there's many. If you support it off of other ideas. That makes it a stronger argument. But if you base it off of its own ideas, that's a circular argument that has no real basis. Well, just because it's circular doesn't mean it doesn't have a basis. That's completely the preposterous to assume. If something is true, it justifies itself. I don't, I, when you say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you say two plus two is four, that's circular reasoning. That doesn't mean that two plus two is not four. Why is two plus two four? Because you have two, you have two, that makes four. That's circular reasoning. It justifies itself, yet it's still true. But you're not arguing against 2 plus 2 being 4 because it's circular reasoning. That's, you're arguing against the Bible and God's word for being circular reasoning. That's, that's not circular reasoning. It is circular reasoning. How so? Because you know 2 is 2, right? Why is 2, 2? Because you have 1 and you have 2. That's circular. It's justifying itself. It's making itself. Because it's that's a, circular it's reasoning. It's objective construct that is meant to be the framework for the basis of math. Come on, man. you got to humble yourself. 2 plus 2 is 4. That is circular reasoning. But it's still justifiable. You're it doesn't... You're just not able to see the other support beams to that argument. No, but listen, listen, listen. My, what I'm saying to you is that just because something is circular reasoning does not invalidate it. You want more than circular reasoning, that's fine. But that doesn't mean that it's not true because it's circular reasoning. I'm not saying that it's not true because it's circular reasoning, but I have no reason to believe that it is true if it is solely cir circular reasoning. So you believe it based on what you can see? If I throw something out there, like, just some absurd justification for something, and it sure. justifies itself, essentially, you know, sure. I did this because of this. Yeah. And it's circular reasoning. That doesn't necessarily mean that that is a basis for a logical reason to do that. Right? You know? That's fine. I understand where you're coming from. And but so circular reasoning, it's not that it is invalid in itself, but there is no other basis to prove that it is valid. And so there's no way to prove that it's valid unless you connect it to other things, and thus it's not circular reasoning. You know? Well, the connection to other things would be the testing and the demonstrating, which I gave you examples of. I showed you that you can test and demonstrate the Bible and see that it's true. And what it says, it validates itself. You gave me one example of a singular thing, and that's... It's not even when you said that, like you know, abstinence prevents STDs and pregnancy outside yep. marriage. Yeah, exactly. That's not a belief. That's literally like if you don't. If, it's a if, fact. If you aren't married, things can happen outside of marriage because you're not married. That's, so now here's the thing. But no, no, no. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. Right? We get that from the law of Moses. Show me another religion or another belief out there around the time of the Hebrews that said don't have sex with multiple partners or don't have sex before marriage. Show me just one. Just a single one other than the Hebrews. Would you realize that the sprouts of Judaism and Islam and Christianity all sprout from the same root? That doesn't mean they're all the same plant. I'm not saying they are. Yeah. But they start at the same seed. Well, the Romans 11 says that God grafts out the natural branch to graft in the uh, the wild olive branch. So I'm just saying that it started from the same origin. And so not all of the not all of the different people with different religions and stuff agreed on the same things. You can say, yeah, don't have sex outside of marriage because then this stuff will happen outside of marriage. But the point I'm making But if people are married to multiple people, then that's still that sort of connectivity, is it not? The point I'm make the point I'm making is that God's word said that before anybody else and it was true. And now everybody else agrees with it and they argue, well God's word got it from them. No. People got that from God's word. 
That's where that came from. God's word supports the logical fallacy in, you know. There's no logical fallacies with God's word. Not a single one. Okay, you're kind of being circular with this. You, you've said this multiple times over. Well, because you keep bringing it up. I'm going to keep giving you the same answer because God's word doesn't change. That's the whole point I'm making. Your mind won't either. Well, you, you apparently only believe in things you can see, right? No, I don't. So you believe in things that you can't see? Yeah. What, what do you think is around us right now? The wind. Nitrogen, oxygen, a bunch yeah. of shit in the air. You know, Jesus said that Jesus said that spirits are like the wind. He said that you don't see where the wind comes or goes from, but you see the effect it has on the grass. Jesus said spirits are the same way. So Exactly. So can you see, can you logically justify God's actions in those things that cannot be Absolutely. Absolutely. I can 100% justify what God does. Can you give me an example that I could see with my own? God is the justification. He's perfect, righteous, and holy. He does not do anything against himself. Everything he does is perfect, righteous, and holy, and it's been the same yesterday, today, and forever. So everything he does is perfect, right? Yep. You just said that. Yep. Just clarifying. Absolutely. Is God is the giver of life. He can take it away. It's not murder when God kills somebody. He has the right to take your life away at any moment he gave it to you. Yeah. He, he, he admitted that he was hmm? not perfect. Did he make the devil? Yeah, God made Lucifer, but he didn't make him as an evil being. He made him as a perfect being who chose to fall. He had free will. He is all knowing. So why would he know that he would fall? He did know he would fall. So why did he make him? Because he personally decided to make him and still had love for him. Okay, so why God knows that God knows that you are gonna sin one day. Why did he make you? I bet you're happy he made you, aren't you? I don't believe in it. Well, you don't have to believe. You could go on the uh, highway. I don't believe in 18 wheelers. Splat doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Your belief has no effect on reality. Coming straight at you, you can't see God coming to smite you. The point was, was that you don't just because you don't believe in something doesn't mean it's not true. That's the whether I believe in it or not. I mean, it doesn't matter. We we don't have our hands on the thermostat of the earth. Can you answer the question? I can answer. Can you answer the question? Do I believe that we are causing the earth to get warm? No. Yeah. Well, if you stand on the highway and you say you don't believe in the ancient wheelers, mm -hmm. God's going to stop him from flying you? He could. Yeah. Yeah, if he so chooses. If you stand in a coal factory and say global warming isn't real, is that going to stop all the carbon dioxide from trapping the heat from the Why are you so worried about the world? Because it's dying. And? People die too. What's the problem with death? Okay, so you think the world should die? I didn't say it should. You think we humans should kill the earth? I don't think we're killing the earth. I don't think we have the ability to do that. I don't, I don't think we have the power. You're giving us way too much credit, man. Are you aware with the term, of the term deforestation? Okay, I'm not going on this red herring fallacy that you brought up earlier. I'm sticking to God's word in the Bible and the reason I came out here because y'all souls are important to God and he died on the cross to save you from your sin. That's why I'm out here. So I would like to stick to that and focus on that point. If there's anything y'all want to talk about beyond that, that's fine. I'm not going to participate. I'm here for one reason and one reason only. Jesus died to set you free from sin because he loves you and thought about you on that cross while he was dying. He cared about you enough to die for you. And you know what? Your sins caused Jesus to die. So instead of worrying about the carbon and the coal and all these factories and all the methane and all that that's killing the earth, you should worry about your sins that went against the Holy Spirit of God and put him on that cross. Okay, but here's the thing. If my sins haven't happened yet, if I choose not to commit a sin, or if I do choose to commit a sin, no matter which one I do, Jesus already died whether or not I committed the sin, yes? Yes. Okay, so if I commit half the sins that I would have otherwise, does that change whether or not Jesus Just one of those sins will send you to hell. If you don't repent of it and you keep doing it, Right? You'll go to hell. God's not a respecter of persons. They're, I believe in Jesus, now I can go molest children and go to heaven. That's not how it works. I believe in Jesus, I can keep telling lies and I go to heaven. It doesn't work that way. Well, I'm just telling you now, because you were explaining if I do half the sins and don't do the other half. If you sin willfully after coming to Christ, there remains no sacrifice worthy to save you. That's not, that's not what I'm saying at all. Well, that's what I'm saying at all. Okay, can, can, can you listen to what I'm saying and respond without getting sidetracked? I'm saying that you, you said that Jesus died for all of our sins that we're going to do and have done. That's not what I said. I never said that. I said Jesus died to set you free from your sin. That's what I said. To set you free from it so that you won't do it. Not so that you can continue doing it. He didn't die so you could keep on sinning no, no, no. and be forgiven. He died to stop you from sinning. God killed himself to save us from himself. No, to save you from your fate that you chose. That he's giving us. That you chose. He's given us free will. Your mama. Okay. She's going to whoop your ass. And she suddenly decides to not whoop your ass. She didn't save you from being your Did I deserve to get my butt spanked? Did I do something to cause it? I think, I think 
if I did something to cause it, then I would deserve it, would I not? She's giving me mercy. There's nothing wrong with that. God gives mercy. Do you believe a man that kisses a man is uh, deserving eternal punishment? If a person sins, they deserve eternal punishment. They sin against an eternal God that yields an eternal consequence. A temporary action deserves an eternal punishment? It's, a, it's an eternal action because you sinned against an eternal God. Well, it doesn't matter if it's a temporary action. Well, if it's a temporary action and it's an eternal punishment, then your God is entirely just. No, he's not. Yes, he he's absolutely just because he gives you a way out so you don't have to do that anymore. If you still choose to do it, now you deserve that eternal punishment. That's justice. Doesn't that kind of sound like a toxic relationship? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. It's not a toxic relationship. Well, actually, you're right. It is a toxic relationship because you're being toxic to God. Really? Yeah, really. You keep sinning against him after he gave you a way out. You're trampling over his mercy. That sounds like okay. something abusive husband would say. Yeah, so, and you're the abusive husband. So, oh. You keep punching the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So yeah. if my significant other decides to set a bunch of rules on me that I don't believe are fair, right? And I think they're overstepping, so I go out and do some and break some of those rules anyways, right? That's so your I'm, choice. I'm my own person, I'm my own That's your person. choice. And they say, okay, I'm gonna beat you unless you give your life to them. This is so, so bad of an analogy that it doesn't even make sense how bad your analogy is right now. I mean, it's terrible. It's utterly terrible. How is that a bad analogy? Because God is an eternal, perfect, righteous, holy God who has never done anything wrong. Your significant other has done things wrong you to you in the past. Never, you act it's completely never, different. You act as though he has never he acted rash. Have you ever read the Old Testament? He did. Have you he ever did. read the Old Testament? Have you ever... Yes, I've read the Old Testament. Not everything in the Old Testament is condemned. In fact, God caused his people to record the history when they went against him. When the Hebrews did go and do bad things, God made his people record it, and we have a record of those bad things they did. Doesn't mean he justified them doing it, but he recorded that his people went and did things against him. What about the things that he did against people who did not know of them? If, if, let, me, let, me, let me paint you a picture, okay? Let's say someone out there has never heard of God, okay. and they die. Sure. Is it their fault that they get you're skipping the entire lifetime of that person how did they live their life did they follow the two lights that god put in their life the light of creation and the light of conscience were they obeying the the knowledge that they had he's asking what if this person never, never like, like let's say, foot let's say foot. sure let's say they never heard of god and they died is god not a spirit who can reach any person at any time through any means how do you know this person didn't have god reach out to them and reveal himself to them in their lifetime because it's a hypothetical scenario oh say so in your hypothetical scenario god's not powerful enough to reach them or he just chose not to because you see you've got the wrong idea of so god from the very so start he reaches everyone, whether they believe in him or not yes absolutely he's calling all people to him and do people does everyone see that calling God's ability to speak to people is greater than their ability to hear him speak. Okay, so, if that person who had not heard of God was unable to hear God's contact, unable... You're assuming that God's not powerful enough to reach them. You said they're unable to hear it. That means God's not powerful enough to reach them? Or maybe their ears aren't powerful enough to hear him. Well, that would be by choice. They would be choosing to not hear him at that point. <laughs> well, what if they aren't choosing? What you're basically asking me, could God create a rock so heavy not even he could lift it? That's basically what you're doing right now. That's not what I'm doing. No, it is. You just don't see it. That's exactly your what you're doing. Exist. Your hypothetical does not exist. It has existed in the past. Okay. No, okay, give me an example. Where? When? Who? Thousands of years ago. Give me an example, specific person. You said it's happened. The entirety of the Americas fired this mass consciousness. Not true. Not true. Not at all. Do you know their life? Would they live how they live their life? Were you there? I don't know. Wait, so you believe the history written down about them? Yeah. But you don't believe the history written down about Jesus? So you're a hypocrite. You pick, you pick and choose what you believe. Well, the history written down about them. Come on, man. Come on, man. Okay, man. Come on, man. You are a hypocrite. Do you believe in evolution? So you believe what men wrote about millions of years ago? You believe what men wrote about what happened millions of years ago? Protozoa that evolved into multi-celled organisms. You believe that, but you don't believe 2,000 years ago. No. You're a hypocrite. Those humans do not write a million years ago. They're writing now. You believe in talking monkeys, but you don't believe in talking snakes or talking donkeys. Those humans are writing right now. They're looking for evidence right now. You got no ears, man. You got no ears. That was not published until 80 years after it was originally. No, actually, it was as close as to 70 or 60. Wait, 70 or 60? Yeah. Can I mention something? Do you believe in Aristotle? Wait, 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 wait. Do you, do you believe in Aristotle? We don't have anything from him until 300 years after his death. Oh, okay. Come on, man. Come on, man. What were you going to say? There's almost nothing that can be subjected without doubt. But, so you're, you're, 
you're arguing that there has to be a God. You're arguing. I'm stating a fact. I'm not arguing. I'm just stating the truth. That's all I'm doing. So you are trying to preserve your belief in God without allowing. I don't need to preserve my belief in God. It, it is truly and fully what it is. Okay, I don't have to do that. Right How's that? Because you are not allowing yourself to listen to other people and no. yet you're expecting What you're saying about me is wrong. You're making false assumptions and I'm correcting you on are you them. Are you, have you been listening to what we've been saying? Yes, I have. Have you actually been listening and understanding and trying to reason with me, essentially? Or How can you, I reason you, with something that's unreasonable? Have you been listening to casting it aside because, because we disagree? Have you been listening to us and casting it aside because we disagree? No. I cast it aside because it's ridiculous and makes no sense. It's completely... You're being hypocritical. No, I'm not. What's your thoughts on Muhammad? On the what? Muhammad. The of Muhammad. Muhammad? He was a pedophile. He, he, had, he married a six-year-old and mounted her at nine when he was 56 years old. He's a pedophile. Not to mention, he, he, uh, he actually um, had this uh, thing called muta, where he would allow people to marry a woman for three days, impregnate her, and throw her to the side and pay her money and divorce her. So he basically advocated for prostitution, too. But do you not believe what he wrote? Well, he never wrote anything. He had people who followed. He was illiterate. He couldn't read or write. No, no, Jesus was very literate. What did Jesus write? He wrote in the sand when they brought the woman uh, uh, accused of adultery to him. He wrote in the sand. What do you have that he wrote? What? What do you have that he wrote? Your assumption is that we have to have it. Yeah. He wasn't just, he was simply telling you the facts about Muhammad. You asked me about Muhammad. You asked me about Muhammad. That's all I stated a fact about him. That's it. So you believe that thought Muhammad's word is less value? Absolutely, it's less valuable. You can look at you can look at it based on the. This is where you do internal critique and you read and see what was written down about his life, who he was, what he did. Oh, yeah. He doesn't think it's less valuable because he didn't write. That's not what he said. Simply just stating the fact that Muhammad wrote nothing. That's all he said. It doesn't make it less valuable because Muhammad didn't write it. It's less valuable because it disagrees with God's word. Yes. God's word is a standard of truth. So if anything disagrees with God's word, it's false. But that. Your version of God's word. I love what Muhammad says that what y'all are saying is disagreeing with God's word. Yep, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So why do you choose to believe the Bible over God? Okay, so like my friend was saying about internal critique. Okay, so if I do an internal critique of Quran, the Quran, okay, I go into it and I check its claims for itself and see if it makes any coherence. It's logical. For example, the Quran says that Allah has no son. So Jesus is not a son. The Quran says Jesus did not die on the cross. Jesus does say that. The Quran says Jesus is going to crush the cross. Jesus did not die on the cross. Judas died on the cross. Exactly. Jesus is a prophet, like the Son of God. It's all things the Quran says and what Muslims believe. Okay? But the Quran also says, go to the people of the book, Christians and Jews, read the Injil. I'll be back later. Read the prophets. Hey, God bless you. That's what this is a good Quran conversation. Says. So let's, look, let's, let's, look, let's look, analyze, examine these claims and see if all of them put together make sense. Can we look at the NGL and read it? Can we go to the people of the book? Can we go to the prophet and read that and believe that and believe the Quran at the same time? No, because the Bible, the NGL, the prophets, they all say that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus did die on the cross, that Jesus is God's Son. Then why didn't the Quran says the exact opposite. Get the, 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 What's that? Seven years. That's actually not true. That's not true. We actually have manuscripts now that go back to 30 years after Christ died. Oh, that's right, yeah. 30 years after he died. I forgot died. about that. But, but, but listen, the time frame is irrelevant. This is why. Because you're assuming it's only man involved in it, okay? You're assuming that it's all about man, and man's going to mess it up. It's not what the Bible says about itself. The Bible's claim about itself is that inspired by God and written by holy men of old. That is his claim, okay? So we're not just talking about men making mistakes. We're talking about God overseeing the whole thing and writing down his word through holy men. That's what the claim is. Amen. Okay? What is stopping those holy men from lying? Because they're holy. Because men. they're holy. They're holy men. Holy men don't lie. Sure. Holy men don't lie. Holy men what makes you think that this shit works? Are you going to just curse at me while talking? Because I'm not going to talk to you if you're just going to be violent like that. No, you are. You walked up to me and started cursing. That's very not not cool. I'll talk to you cordially. Sure. Thank you. What makes you think this works? Uh, God. So why do you think that standing out here? 
Yeah, Are we screaming? I don't know. Like, really like, very demeaning How is it demeaning to tell somebody not to do these things? Well, you're assuming. Well, you're assuming that I'm a product of this ministry, so it worked on me, actually. But firstly, you're assuming that our only goal out here is to convert people. That's not true. Our, our goal out here, first of all, is to glorify God, to do what He said in Mark 16: "Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Do it in an instant, in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine." We're called to do that in the Bible. So if I truly believe God's word, the Bible, and I believe what I believe, I would I have to come out here and do this first off. Second off, my second goal is to see people saved. Yes, that's a good byproduct of the ministry. But I don't judge my ministry based on how many people get saved and write their names down and count how many people I brought to Christ today. That's not what I do. All right, so, so let's take let's assume the Bible's another definition. Another question. Right. Sure. Okay. Can someone declare their holy and actually the be holy? Core according to the Bible. Christianity of what Jesus taught to love one another and to love God's yourself. To love God first and then love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Sure. So, but what is love? Can a man do that? Can a man well, I think a lot of it has to do with acceptance. Do you think love just accepts everybody the way they are? I think that's what it should be. I think that's what unconditional love is. So do you... Well, love is conditional. It is. I don't think all love is conditional. Well, would you, do you love pedophiles? Going on a be real with him. Be real with me. Do you love pedophiles? Why would I love pedophiles? Well, so your love for pedophiles is conditional. You're only going to love them if they stop doing it, right? Uh, I mean, come on. You just got to be real, though. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right. So, my question is, what does pedophiles have to do with the like Nobody said anything about being gay. You just brought that up. You said love is not conditional. I gave you an example of conditional love. This is saying that hell awaits for everybody on this side. If you're gay, if you're Muslim. Yep. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense to me. How? Because these are people. They are people. Why would we be created this way? They're not created that way. See, that's that's where the problem is. You assume people are created with a sexuality. They're not. They're not born with a sexuality. They're not. And if you say people are born with sexualities, you have no right to condemn a pedophile for being attracted to children. Because they're born with their sexuality, right? You see you see how you start laughing and you back up immediately, but the truth... No, no. The, the, the truth is, if a homosexual is born with their sexual tendencies, then a pedophile is born with their sexual tendencies. You don't get to pick and choose. You don't pick and choose. Either they choose to be that way or they're born that way. Which is it? A lot of people that are attracted to children mm -hmm. were abused. You're right, and a lot of homosexuals were also. That's not true. It's very true. It's very true. I've talked to hundreds of homosexuals. That's not what I said. Do not, do not twist my words. That's not what I said. Why don't you ask me what I said instead of going to somebody else? Why don't you ask me what I said? So you're only coming over to to actually cause a scene and start something. You're not actually genuine caring about what I said. Oh. Well, you didn't come to me. You went to her. I said it. Why don't you ask me what I said? Why don't you ask me what I said? Figures. Figures. She's just a hypocrite. She just wants to mock. No, I'm telling the truth. Mm. No, she asked you what I said. Why would she not ask me what I said? Oh, oh, okay. And I'm not required to speak to y'all either. I took him out. Oh, but I took him out. Oh, but I took him out. But I took him out. I repented. So you're judging according to appearance? You're judging us according to appearance. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. This is a Bible. This is a sign that said Jesus died for you. Now, why don't you? Do Whoa! Don't touch! Don't touch the sign! Don't don't touch the sign now! Don't don't touch the sign now! Don't don't touch the sign now! Because I told you not to. You're telling me not to be a homosexual? Too bad. Look, I got a follower, everybody. I got a follower. She's following me. Let's go. You know, don't touch the sign. Don't touch the sign. Do not touch the sign. Do not touch the sign. You are breaking the law right now. I want you to know, you are breaking the law. Yeah, you can get arrested for doing that. Seriously. I'm not coming on to you. I am not attracted to you. Don't, don't accuse me of anything, okay? Trust me. You can take my word for it. All right? 
I'm a godly man. I don't look at women that way, okay? Except you're coming up touching me. Except you are coming up touching my... The, the law says if you touch my sign while it's in my hand, you touch me. You look up the law. It's called litigation. Look it up. You're not. You're, you're kind of ignorant to what you're talking about right now, okay? I'm going to go back to my conversation now. Do you, do you want to continue our conversation? I would love to, too. The verse that I feel like, I, I don't know the exact scripture. Sure. But it says something like, man shall not lay with man, right? It does. Okay. The original Hebrew translation of that verse is hmm. man shall not lay with boy. And what are those words? Man shall not lay with No, what are the Hebrew words? So I don't study Hebrew, but I study Koine Greek. Well, hold on, hold on. You made a claim. Can I finish? Dude, you made your claim though. You've already stated it. Okay, continue. So if you want to have a conversation, we can, but right, I would like to finish speaking. Go ahead. Awesome. So the Bible has been translated repeatedly over and over and over again. No, it hasn't. It has. Only twice. Oh, God. He's more the word in Koine speaking Greek. To people like you makes me feel like I'm speaking to a wall because you Cause you're wrong. A wall. You're wrong. You won't even let me show you that you're wrong. But you don't want to know that you're wrong. Okay, you're getting anywhere. I grew up in the church. Oh, dude, kick your feet, bro. You got a bunch of them on your shoe right now. They're all over your shoe. They're gonna get. They're gonna get in there. Uh, I would take your shoe off. Yeah. Oof. Sorry. Are you going to listen to me respond or are you just going to walk away? Because I'm just going to walk away if you're going to walk away. Can I finish my statement? Are you going to walk away after you finish your statement? That's fair. But you're making a lot of claims and you're moving on to point after point without letting me respond to a point. You, and you use this excuse of, oh, you're interrupting me, but you make five, six, seven points, I can't even respond to one. That's not a conversation. Conversation is you make a point, I respond. I make a point, you respond. That's cordial conversation. I would love to give you a response. You stated, and you're talking about Leviticus, okay? Chapter 20, I believe 21 maybe. And you're talking about man shall not lay with man the way he does woman. It is an abomination, okay? I don't study Hebrew. I can't tell you the words in Hebrew, but I do study Koine Greek, and I can tell you what it says in Koine Greek. The original translation translation from Hebrew to Greek was what Jesus himself had in his hand when he spoke about this, okay? The word for homosexual or sodomite is arsenokotis, okay? The word for a effeminate, a person who dresses as the opposite gender or who is attracted to the same gender is malikoi, okay? The word for pedophile is katamite. The word katamite was never used in Leviticus. It was arsenokotis and malikoi. And it meant a, a practicing homosexual, someone who laid with another man the way he did a woman. The word child was never used in that sentence. It was never mistranslated. That's a misnomer that people use to justify themselves and their homosexuality. It's simply not true. When you get a chance, can I ask you a question? Sure. Yeah, hold on. I think she's the next in line. Um, my only question, okay, so where it says hell. Yes. Okay, so wasn't that the whole point of the coming of Christ? And this is just from my understanding of being raised in the church. Mm -hmm. um, we follow the Ten Commandments and would have to make a sacrifice in order to gain access to heaven, but that wasn't that the point of Jesus' coming, to be the ultimate sacrifice? Well, what was the sacrifice for, though? For our sins. But, this is my only, this is my last part, considering that that's the case, says that God has to accept us by what we do. We become a living sacrifice. So just as we used to sacrifice, the, the Hebrew sacrifice in the Old Testament, we are the sacrifice now. We become a, we beat our bodies into submission. We die to ourselves. We deny ourselves daily. We pick up our cross. We are the sacrifice now. Then why, is Jesus, then why is Jesus considered the lamb? And why is it the lion? Well, no, he 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 paid the ransom. So Jesus didn't take your sin debt on the cross. Well, no, hear me out. The, the, the debt the the debt to sin, the wages of sin, is what? 
death. Spiritual death. You cannot sin and still physically die. Romans chapter 5 verse 14 says that death passed down from Adam to Moses even over those who had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So there was people who didn't commit sin against God in the Old Testament who still died. Because, okay, yeah, in the Old Testament. No, but I'm just giving you an example that when it says the wages of sin is death, it's talking about spiritual yeah, death, understand. separation from God. Okay. Jesus didn't get spiritual death on the cross. He didn't take your, your payment on the cross. He what, paid... He paid the ransom for your fine. He paid it with his own money, his own blood. He paid that ransom. Now you and Jesus both get to go to heaven and uh, be together for eternity. Jesus ascended to heaven. If he paid the price for your sin, he'd be in hell right now in torment. But that's not what he did. He didn't go to hell and get tormented. He didn't pay the price. He didn't take the punishment for your sin. He paid the price and ra he ransomed you back to the Father. It's like if you get a speeding fine. You can't pay the fine. You're about to go to jail, but the, someone comes in the court. No, I'll pay the fine. He doesn't go to jail for you. He pays the fine for you and you both walk free. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He didn't take your punishment. We, we, we crucify ourselves daily. We are the sacrifice through Christ. And the reason is, is because we have Christ dwelling in us and he is that sacrifice. So with him dwelling in us, we become that sacrifice with him. We're buried with Christ in baptism and we die to ourselves and deny ourselves daily. That's what we're called to do as Christians. Yeah, like, well, hold on. My whole, it still doesn't make complete sense to me, and I understand that that's a very deep topic that probably yeah. takes a lot of time. It, it does, yeah. And just from being raised in the church, I have always, a Methodist church, non-denominational, what it was always taught to me. <laughs> Methodist is a denomination, but I... Right. I said a denomination. Oh, okay. I thought you said non-denominational. No, I said I've been to a Methodist church and then a Oh, I heard you wrong. I'm sorry. Yes, okay. I apologize. Um, and it was always taught that Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. And therefore, and this is just what I, I have understood. But he is the sacrifice. Yeah. In, a, in the sense, hold on, I have one more part of this. In, in the sense that... We, therefore, when we sin, we do not have to make a sacrifice based off the Ten Commandments. That the Ten Commandments are invalid in a sense. Like, okay. It almost sounds like you're saying Jesus' death on the cross is a get out of sin free card. So every time you sin, his death is applied on it and you're free to go from it. No, that only, okay, no. Or phone number? That is not, uh, I'm explaining it. Yeah, I'm not accusing you, I'm just, that's what it sounded like no, you were I saying. Know. Yeah, I'm explaining Of course. Um, that the whole point of Jesus dying, okay, what did God say when our new commandments were the rules were when Jesus came? Well, what did Jesus say? The, the, the two, the two great, no, oh, you skipped the first one. You went right well, to number two. Okay, there you go. You have to say them in order. Remember, the greatest commandment is to love God with your whole mind, soul, body, spirit, and strength. And the second is like it to love your neighbor as yourself. Okay. Yeah. And if you love your neighbor as yourself. But well, no, I want to know why did you go straight to the second one? Why did you skip the first one? There was really no specific order. That's just the one that I. No, there is a specific order though. It's to love God first. And if you, you love your neighbor, but you don't love God, where, it doesn't matter. in that does it say that we have to do all of these other things that you just told me? It said to love God with all your heart, body, soul, whatever. Of course. And love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. And that's the whole point of why Jesus... You know, but you know what Jesus said? If you love me, if, the word is conditional, right? If is a condition, right? If this, then that. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Did you know he said that? So if you don't keep his commandments, you don't love him. That's what he said. And that's the answer to your question. And Jesus said not to do any of those things. Jesus said woe unto people for doing those things. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Yes. And what is his commandments? Um, the, I don't know all these You guys should really have a Ten Commandments you want to have. Yeah. Uh, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Where's Brother Chris? Brother Chris right over there? He's got the Ten Commandments sign right there. Oh, I see. Yep. You shall not have no other gods before me. So yep. that's talking about idol gods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Yep. Use the Lord's name in vain. Mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Yep. Honor your father and mother. Yep. Should not kill. Mm -hmm. Should not commit adultery. Yep. Should not. By the way, adultery is is lusting after someone too. Jesus said, "You've heard it said, thou shalt not commit adultery." But I say unto you, if you lust after a woman, you've committed adultery already. So watching pornography, masturbating, all that—that's adultery. Mm -hmm. So. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Lying. You shall not covet. Which covet. Where is the homosexuality in this commandments? Well, Jesus said that a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his wife. That, he said that's the only godly marriage. He said that is it. He said a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his wife. That's all. 
He didn't say a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his same-sex partner. He said his wife. So Jesus believed that marriage was only one man and the one woman. The is honor your father and mother, which was not, oh, the commandments were not a result of Jesus. They were a result, I forgot, uh, they were Mount Sinai. Yeah. Well, Moses. Moses, I apologize. You're good. And he gave them to the people. Yeah. He grinded them up and let the people. Yeah. My question yeah. for asking that is you say, well, okay, the Ten Commandments. Any man on this early? Okay. Just to clarify, in the I don't. Ten Commandments, when you were talking about God loving, et cetera, et cetera, and how you said that. I do want to get to her question next pretty soon. Uh, when Jesus said that. Um, Sorry, I keep losing my train of thought. It's okay. When Jesus said that to love God with all your heart, honor thy father and mother, and if we love him, that we will honor his commandments. We'll keep his commandments. Keep, okay, well, do you see what, my, what I'm saying? Sure. That's that's all I'm saying. Is, it's just... Well, Jesus commanded us that a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his wife. That's the only marriage that's allowed. Anything beyond that, man with dog, man with anything besides woman, one man, one woman, is ungodly. That's what Jesus said. I hope that makes sense. I mean, if Jesus said homosexuality was okay, I would be fine with it. But I have to go by what Jesus says, not my own feelings. Do I enjoy coming out here condemning homosexuals? No, absolutely not. You think I enjoy coming out here telling people, hey, being gay is wrong, and then having people run around and steal my stuff and spit on me? I don't enjoy that. But God tells me to spread his word, and this is God's word. Romans 1, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. I can give you many Bible verses that in the original language say homosexuality is an abomination to God. He despises it. Uh, that's just what the Bible says. I, if I'm true to my belief, I have to say that to people. So you're telling me that in all of these countries, like, this is just another question that never gets answered. What about what happens with people that never get exposed to Christianity? Do they all just burn in fiery? This is probably the seventh time today I've had that question asked. So God has put it in God has put it into everyone's heart two lights. The first light is the light of creation. You look around, you know something made us. We exist. We're the effect of a cause. Something, we're here. There's a God. It's undeniable that there's something that made the universe, okay? The second light is the light of conscience. Con meaning with, science meaning knowledge. We have the knowledge of right and wrong. We know not to tell lies, not to steal, not to rape, not to murder, not, not to do these things. We know it in our hearts, right? So if we follow those two lights, and I've never heard about Jesus, never read a Bible, I'm in an Islamic country, and all I know is Islam, but I feel like something's missing and I follow the light of creation and the light of conscience, and next thing you know, uh, I, I meet Jesus in a dream. And then, oh, then a preacher shows up and gives me a Bible. Then I start reading my Bible. We, we see testimonies of that. If you seek God, he will reveal himself to you. That just, uh, that, just, that is not a given guarantee. Do you see what I'm saying? No, it is a given guarantee because it's a promise from God. He says, those who seek me, I will reveal myself to. That's a promise from God. But how do you feel now about how there's three major world religions that come from the Father of Abraham? All the Abraham. Doesn't mean they're right. Okay. I mean. Okay, this is a part of the New Testament, and a lot of the old religions don't use the New Testament. Exactly. Yeah, no, that. No, I, I understand what you're saying, but it is known that Abraham is the father of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. But Abraham isn't Jesus, though. So well, it really yeah. holds no precedent. Well, we're, we're, you say Abraham isn't Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, like, I know. <laughs> you know. I know you know. You know, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. He, he didn't he didn't say before Abraham was I was there. He said before Abraham was I am that the same name that God used for himself in the burning bush to Moses I am who I am. Do you not agree that all other religions can come and make these same arguments? Absolutely not. None of them can make the same arguments. Well, give me examples and I'll tell you I can't go to any specific one because then y'all accuse me of pointing one out or something. Islam you said? I hope I've been. No, you've been very cordial. You've okay, been very cordial. Okay, I just to have a Can I give you a Bible, uh, okay, gospel check? No, no name or number on it. Just a scripture. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, but but also of course. God bless. No, he quoted from the. Well, he didn't denounce it. He he completed it. He fulfilled it. He said that you don't need to worry about the laws of the Old Testament. Just follow me, believe in me, and then love of God. But then he frequently quoted. But he also frequently quoted quoted the Old Testament. The only, well, the only. He would quote them back what they were saying at him to show them how they were wrong about it and that they just needed to love people. Well, before I get to her question, real quick, I. 
things at the wall. If you, if you look at that wall, it would be the most beneficial way to have these signs saying you're going to hell if you miss this and this, but saying that you're trying to spread God's word. God wanted to spread his love. What else could the phrase be? He wanted people to know that he loved them. Like, that's what God wanted. He wanted people to know that he loved them. That's what God wanted. He wanted people to know that he loved them. He wanted people to know that he loved them. That he accepted them. And that God doesn't never, accept people the way they are. Them. That's not true. Yes. Show me a Bible verse for that. God Pull your smartphone out and show me a Bible verse for that. Right? Did you know that Jesus God only talked about the, the, the I listen to you, it's my turn to respond. It's my turn to respond. God does love you no matter what, but but there's consequences to your actions. Okay? And I'm not saying there is You tell me God loves somebody he sent to hell who's burning in hell right now. Tell me he loves them. God says that there's seven things that God hates. The Bible says there's seven things. Listen, you don't want to respond. I'm going to start ignoring you if you don't let me respond. You made six, seven points and you don't let me respond to a single one. No, you, you made multiple points. You don't let me respond to a single one of them. The most beneficial way is just to tell us we'll go to hell if we don't act the way you do. It's not. just. That is not all I've said. I have told people that God loves them out here today. Loves you and that's it. Not homosexuals go to hell. Fornicators go to hell. If they don't repent, if they don't repent and take the way out that God provided for them, they will go to hell. That's the truth. Then they don't do those things anymore. But they, then that's not repenting. No, that's unbelief. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm I'm no longer gonna take your your. I'm no longer gonna take your counsel. Okay. No, the Bible says, "Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly." You're ungodly. I'm not taking your counsel. How can I help you today? Okay, uh, biblically speaking, I want to say that God does love the person that goes to hell. There is just separation from God in hell, which is why he can no longer interact with that person. But well, actually, the, the Bible says that the flames of hell are kindled by the breath of God. So he's interacting with them in the sense he's blowing the air that's causing that them to be tormented. Absolutely not. No. Not anymore. No, he sent them to hell. They're done away with. That's done. He doesn't have love for those people anymore. Okay, that's your opinion, so we'll move on. Okay. Uh, so for the Latinx, I mean, it's the Bible, but yeah, we, we can No, move on. I got you. You're supporting your opinions with the Bible. Of course. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm saying in the context of, the, of Leviticus, where there was like, you know, what people love to quote for same-sex relationships, in the context of that time, wasn't it that people that were sodomites or whatever yeah. were assuming the same the arson of position as women, which is why it was incorrect for them to be together. So now people would say that in the times where people can be of the same social class and be homosexual then... I don't know if I agree with that, what you just stated, the premise. I, I don't think that's biblical the way you said it. It's not just that they're... That, see, the word... Malakoi is the effeminate. That's the effeminate person that's taking the place of a woman when they're a man. The, the, the arsenal kotais is the practicing sodomite. The person who seeks after it, who's engaging in it willfully and enjoying it. There's a big difference. There was people who were forced into effeminism. Right? Because they're not in sin because they're being forced into it. Yeah, because like, in those times, I know they would use that to establish dominance. Some of the, yeah, the some of the Caesars would, would uh, castrate little boys and force them into becoming oh, sex yeah, servants. So, like that's the, Those little boys aren't in sin. They didn't yeah, choose that life. I understand. Yeah, God God, God winks his eye at that and is like, he, he has forgiveness and mercy on that person. Yeah, I should have phrased that better. I'm talking yeah. about people that enjoy sodomy, that seek out those relationships, and are considered like what you quoted, the effeminate people. Yeah. Some people would say that because, oh, they're on a different social class that makes it wrong because it's a power imbalance and people would cite that like homosexuals today can be together because they're in the same social class so what would you think about that i think social classes have nothing to do with it i think it's completely and utterly 100 percent the word of god that has everything to do with it are they obeying god's will for their life or are they obeying their own will for their life god says don't practice homosexuality they practice homosexuality god says he uh, it's an abomination to them and uh, to him and they convince themselves that he still loves them in the midst of their sin but so the context of those passages was it not rape that was happening no no I, I cannot read it to you i'll show you i'll actually show you and it doesn't even just speak about men it talks about women who do it too yeah i know that there's another Oh, I'm going New Testament. I'm going New Testament on you. I'm not going Old Testament on you. That Old Testament is, it, everyone knows Old Testament can, uh, condemns homosexuality. I'm going New Testament. I'm going to show you. Watch. All right, so Romans 1. Whoa. That was loud. Now, hold on. Okay. Professing themselves wise, they became fools, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible men 
Hold on, let me make sure. Yeah, okay. An incorruptible uh, man, and to birds and foot, uh, four-footed beasts and creeping things, whereunto God also gave them up to their uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, here it comes, God gave them up unto vile actions for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burning in their lusts one towards another men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat so it's saying that they were turning away from the natural uses of their body and burning in their lusts one to another. It's talking about homosexuality, that God gave them up to it because of how wicked and vile they were, that they loved that more than God. That's what it says. Yeah, that's the one that I was thinking of, so yeah. I wasn't necessarily thinking of Old Testament. Well, what would you think about churches that support homosexuality? I would say that they're, they're either gravely mistaken and don't know the Lord, or they're purposely doing it to portray an agenda which would make them even more ungodly. But either way, they're not saved. There's no way you could be saved and believe that it's okay to do something the Bible says not to do directly, you know? But I, but I hold that standard to everybody. That's not just, homosexuality is not something special. Like, I say the same thing to liars or thieves or covetous or fornicators, people who have sex outside of marriage, but it's still heterosexual. It's the same thing. So why do you think the church is so hung up on homosexuality as an issue? Well, I, d I don't think that our church is hung up on it because we're the body of Christ. We're not hung up on one specific sin, right? You don't you see homosexual up there, sure, but you look at everything else on there. You know what I mean? Well, hold on. I'm still having a conversation with her. Okay. I was just well, well I'll, I'll get to you. No, I could get to you. Just look. I'm going to finish our conversation first. I'm only one person. I'm not rebuking you, by the way. I'm just. Is, is there any other thing that you wanted to bring up and talk about? No, that was pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. All right, sir. What's up? Uh, I was just wondering, since you're going through a greatest hits, if you can do uh, greatest Matthew hits six, five through fifteen. Matthew six. Well, well, you got it right there. Why don't you go ahead and do it? I was wondering if you could. Well, I can, but you already got it up, don't you? Wouldn't it be better you just go ahead and read it, and I respond to it? Sure. But I, I saw pull that up. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. Wait, when you do what? Wait, wait, when you do what? When you do what? When you pray. Pray. Oh, am I praying right now? You guys see me praying right now? Where they love to pray standing in synagogues. Am I praying right now? To be seen by others. Wait. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Okay. I think I see where you're going. Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. And am I praying right now, sir? And also, that's about the Pharisees who did it out of, like, one. I mean, to what's the difference between a Pharisee and a preacher? Do you read a poem? The difference between a Pharisee and a preacher? No, you don't know the difference between preaching and praying, apparently. I'm not praying right now. I'm preaching. I'm telling the truth. You're, you're witnessing. I'm witnessing. I'm not pre. I'm not praying, okay? I'm not out here. Oh. Uh, our Father which art in heaven, I'm not doing that. I'm not out here asking for a group prayer, man, so that people can look upon me and think of how good of a man of God I am. That's not what I'm doing. You're good. No, I'm good. Uh, do I take the Bible literally? Okay. It's hermeneutics, okay? So we we, uh, we, we use the, um, the reasoning of hermeneutics is that if it makes perfect sense, let it make sense, lest it make no sense at all. When Jesus said, if your eye causes you to sin, pull it out, it's better for you to go to heaven blind than to go to hell with your whole body. Do you think he meant to actually pull your eye out? No, because then you'd be blind. If you pull your other eye out when you sin, now you have no eyes. He's not saying to do that literally, so I don't take that literally. But when he says, uh, uh, do not walk in sin, repent of your sins and come to me, I take that literally because there's something I can actually do without a detriment, right? So it's hermeneutics. We, there's times where it's literal. There's times where it's poetic. There's times where it's uh, just metaphors. So yeah, it, it, you, you use it. You let it con contextualize itself, right? You read it and you use other scriptures and other passages and compare them and let the Bible speak for itself. You know what I mean? I think it's kind of obvious Jesus wasn't telling us to really cut our hand off or to really pull our eye out. If he was, then you'd see all of us out here without hands and without eyes, you know? So, I mean, I think that's kind of like one of those things, and I don't mean to be facetious, but kind of one of those things that goes without being said, you know what I mean? Like it's- Well, I was curious because I know the Episcopal Church uses it as a book of metaphors about people's personal relationships with God, yeah. not necessarily something that you apply specifically to Exactly. Well, I, I would say there's times for that, there's times for not like not everything in the Bible is a metaphor not everything in the Bible is poetic and not everything in the Bible is literal there's times for it there's times where it's not
Huh? Oh, I don't have a problem with other religions. Jesus does. Uh, he said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That's what Jesus said. You gotta ask Jesus that, man. You gotta ask Jesus. Animals? Hey, we're not animals. I'm not even gonna go down that road. No, we're not. We're not. Okay, hold on. Before I go down this road with you, do you believe everything written down in the Bible? What, what, do, what do you think's wrong with the Bible? Have, yo, you haven't even read it. No, I, I believe that I follow my own path. You follow your own path. Okay. So do you believe that the people who wrote the things down in the Bible were genuine? That they wrote it down 100%? So you believe we evolved from animals, correct? Well, hold, hold on, hold on. I'm asking you believe that we evolved from animals, right? Okay. Well, you know, that's just a piece of paper. That doesn't prove that everything you believe is true, right? Just like the Bible is a piece of paper, not everything that I believe and not everything that I think is true. It makes it true just because I think it's true, right? So... How do you know that the Bible is fact, though? Because the people who wrote it, Jesus didn't write the Bible. It was written by. You're right. They said it You're was correct. Inspiration or yeah, the Bible. The Bible claims of itself that. How do you know that they were just hearing things and writing it down and saying, "I hear"? Because there's people. Well, I do believe they heard things. But how do you know that it was? It's, well, it's a question of whether those things were true or not. But how can you rationalize yourself that that was God? Or Jesus. Or How do you feel because you all that is the truth? Because well, Jesus came and affirmed everything that was said. So if you believe Jesus is yeah. the prophet, then it's like, okay, well, he's he's backing the Old Testament teachings. And so therefore, it's like, well, because if you believe in Jesus, and yeah. you believe in the New Testament, you have to believe in the Old Testament. Exactly. Because he's the one that like basically and, said, this is true, all this Old Testament stuff, and I'm changing that Old Testament. Yeah, and, and like, also, people disagree on what should and shouldn't be in the Bible because they want to make sure that they're bringing the right book in. But typically, it's, it's actually a little bit more than that too. It's yeah. it's it's a, it's a simple fact. And if I say anything beyond this, then I'm not even trustable. The reason I believe what the Bible says is because I've met the person who wrote the Bible through other people, the Holy Spirit, the, the Spirit of God that it dwells inside of people who submit themselves to Him. If people have never met, you're doing the same thing. Have never found you. Are they still going to be in sin that they don't feel like? Well, are they still in sin because they don't feel that way? Well, here's the like, thing. Like, if you know the Bible, but they don't feel the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay. My question, and this is a hypothetical person, so I can't really speak 100%. Thus saith the Lord on it. In the evangelical church that have left the church that say that they never felt it. There are Bible verses that speak about people who left out from among us because they were never of us. I believe that it's speaking about those people because they did not truly submit their lives to God. They didn't. There's something they were holding on to in their heart that they did. The Bible says God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners. If you're holding willful sin in your heart, you're holding some form of fornication or drug addiction or pornography, something wicked in your heart that you don't want to give up and you repent, supposedly you're not actually repenting and God doesn't hear that prayer because you're not willing to let it go. You have to be willing and broken and contrived over your wrongdoings in order for God to even hear you when you speak. So those people, in my opinion, in my experience and what I've seen, did, never truly gave up their sins and repented. That's why they never experienced the Holy Spirit. Are they going to go to hell though? If they don't, if they don't truly repent, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's the argument from authority. The ad populum argument. Argument from authority. Because other people accept them, it's okay and right? Well, Jesus said, enter in at the straight gate. For broad is the path that leads to destruction, and many are them that be there on it. Narrow is the way, and difficult is the path that leads to life and very few are them that find it. Jesus said that. You go from the bottom of the world, from the homeless, to poverty, to all the way to the top without even being religious. How do you explain that? What do you mean? Yeah, God makes it rain on the just and the unjust. What? No, I'm telling people that if they don't stop doing those things, they will go to hell. That's God's word. I'm not telling them, you're damned to hell and you can't escape it. That's not what I said. I tell them, listen, there's a way out. You don't have to go there. You can stop what you're doing, return to God, and go the, the other way with Jesus, and you don't have to go there. That's what I'm telling them. 
defined by the rules. So pedophiles should just be able to live their life without being confined to those rules? They can just do whatever they want? I don't believe they were born that way. I don't believe they were born that way. At least you're consistent. I don't believe they're born that way. Not at all. I, 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 so I wouldn't say all the time. I would say sometimes people are just wicked. Sometimes people just enjoy doing things that are disgusting. Okay. Well, you said people should just be able to live however they want. Isn't that what you said? But no, is that not what you said, though? Okay, so the reason why people can't just live however they want is because the way people want to live sometimes is wrong. It's just true. But it's still wrong. Well, guess what? They can. They can live however they want. They have freedom of choice. They can go out and shoot somebody. They can go out and run someone over. They can go out and do whatever they want. You're right. I agree with you. We have no contention there. We're in agreement on this. 100%. Yeah. The issue is that if they die, they'll go to hell. And I don't want that for them because I love them as I love myself. I care about them. That's why. That's why I don't want... It's just like if I watched my neighbor walk into their house while it's on fire. They go, huh. That's a nice light, and they walk into their house. What do you think I want to do? Not go over there and bust the door down and drag them out their house? I'm not going to let them burn up in their house. Yeah, but if there was an outside factor that could stop the fire and keep your uh, neighbor alive, and you couldn't do anything, but this outside per other person, like a firefighter, could yeah. help them, uh -huh. and the firefighter just stood there and watched, yeah. wouldn't you think that firefighter is not a good person? Of course I would. The same way yeah. God has the power to bring people to heaven, you literally in your eyes. Wouldn't that be spiritual rape, though? Would that not be spiritual rape? If he forces you to heaven kicking and screaming against your will? It's free will. Question for you. Right, you don't have to answer this. Do you have a significant other? Do you have somebody? Not, have you ever had one in the past? Okay, so you know what it's like to be in a relationship with a person? If you ever put a gun to your significant other's head and force them to do something, would that be love on their part? Well, well hold, hold on. Follow me here logically. Would, would it be love on their part? But that's what you did with God when you compared him to the firefighter. You just did that. No, I'm saying you can't. I can compare God to humanity because God created humanity and God put in place for humanity. You speak your I can't. Uh, you do understand. You just did exactly what you said for me not to do. You're looking at it from a different perspective. Because I can see God as an all knowing, all powerful, all caring, all Absolutely. Being. Well, he's not all loving he is love everything love comes from god but he's not all love he has indignation and justice and wrath you know the god gets angry too you know we get angry god gets angry is we're made in his image no i'm comparing humans to god see we're made in god's image so you compare the human to the god not the god to the human if we're made in his image then we can compare ourselves you're right we compare ourselves to him that's right you don't compare him to yourself uh, how does the saying go? God made us in his image and we've been trying to return the favor ever since. We can't make God turn to what we do. And we have to turn what we do to God. That's the way it is. God can simply, but then if, let's say, for some amazing justice, um, God doesn't just want to make us perfect beings. He doesn't want to allow us to live our lives completely out of sin. He wants us to have a struggle in our life and fight sin and hurt and all this stuff for whatever time reason. Even if I can't save humanity, I should still fucking try. Then how is he love? I think you started from the wrong point. God created everything perfect. He made everything perfect. It was all right. No, he didn't. Adam ruined. Adam Adam ruined it because he listened to his wife and ate from the tree that God told him not to eat from that he knew not to eat from and did it anyway. God made it all perfect, gave it all of them every opportunity to live holy. They chose not to do it. Oh, 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 wait a minute. If he didn't give them free will, it would be spiritual rape. Right back to the same point. If he forced them to obey him by never giving them the option not to obey him, that would be spiritual rape. They'd be robots. They wouldn't be humans made in God's image. It's slavery, exactly. He had to give them... He, he had to... No, not at all. He had to give them free will in order for them to freely love him. To love somebody, it has to be by choice. You can't force love. It's not possible. You can if you are an all-powerful. No. You, you ever hear that saying, can God make a rock so heavy, not even he could lift it? You ever hear that? 
dad's a fallacy to show the ridiculousness of having an all-powerful Yeah. Well, guess what? He did make a rock so heavy he couldn't lift it. You're the rock. He gave you free will. He can't force you to love him. He can't force you to obey him. Free will is not saying... Spiritually great, sorry, is what you're saying. It's saying, do this, love me, or else you will be punished for the rest of eternity, and you will you will have the most infinite amount of torture. You'll never, once you enter that torture, you will never be able to prove to me that you've learned better. You will always be in pain. Yeah. Spiritual rape is doing something against your consent and taking something away from you, which is... Yeah. Which would be forcing you to obey those rules and then having no punishment because there's no need for it because he forces you to obey the rules. The punishment is because you chose willingly by your own choice to go against him. But it's not a willing choice if there is no It's a willing choice. A it's always a willing choice, always. You know right from wrong. You know not to beat people up. If you choose to beat somebody up, you go to jail. You know that. You know that. Let's be realistic. Let's not be fallacious here with each other. You know what's wrong and you know what's right. But the reason I know that is because I'm empathetic. Because I'm Where does that empathy come from? wanting not to get something done to you. So loving someone else as yourself, exactly what Jesus said to do. The golden rule has been around longer than Christianity. No, 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 Jesus gave the golden rule. You gotta go look up back up in your history. Jesus said that before Buddha did, okay? I'm not saying that, I'm not saying Buddha. I'm saying no, I know. The idea of not harming others because you don't want that harm to come to well, you. Well, of course, yeah. been around forever. Absolutely, yeah, because, because God gave that rule and Jesus was God. Of yeah. course it's been around forever. All of your logic circles back to you because God, but you've given me no proof that... If I go outside of God to give you proof for God, now that outside proof becomes God. If God is who he claims to be and I go anywhere to try to prove him besides him, that makes whatever I went to God instead of him. God is himself by very inherent nature. He exists outside of space, time, and matter. Servants, we will see him arise. 